Namaskar and welcome to Sunset Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our show In Focus, where we bring you detailed analysis of key national and international issues. Today, we're going to talk about sustainable agriculture. Now, agricultural chief scientists of G20 member countries are meeting from 17 to 19th April in Varanasi to explore joint actions towards science-based solutions to achieve sustainable and profitable agri-food systems. 80 foreign delegates from G20 member states are participating in this event, whose theme is sustainable agriculture and food systems for healthy people and planet. Now, various issues of uh, agriculture research and development, including agriculture R&D, food security and nutrition, climate smart agriculture, digital agriculture, public-private partnership, etc., have been included for discussion. An important feature will also be the Millets and Other Ancient Grains International Research Initiative, that is Maharishi, which is also proposed for deliberations as G20 initiative during India's presidency. Now, the annual meetings of uh, Agricultural Chief Scientists of G20 states, that is MACS G20, which have taken place uh, since 2012, seek to address uh, central questions in the field of agriculture and nutrition, which are too great to be solved with only national efforts and also better coordinate agricultural research systems and to seek and apply common solution strategies. So today we'll take a closer look at uh, not only this meeting, but also the concept of uh, sustainable agriculture. What are the global initiatives on this uh, nationally as well as globally? What is being done? And for more on this, uh, we're joined by a distinguished panel of experts. Let me first uh, introduce them to you, beginning with, uh, we have with us, uh, uh, former MSW Virendra Gupta with us, uh, is the president of uh, Antarashtriya Sahyog Parishad, uh, joining us. Uh, we uh, also have uh, Dr. S.K. Malhotra, Director, Knowledge Management in the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, joining us. Uh, and uh, we will soon uh, be joined by one more panelist. Uh, but let me first begin with you, uh, Mr. Malhotra. You know, let's start by understanding the significance or the importance of this meeting. You know, the, the meeting of agriculture chief scientists, uh, which happen every year uh, uh, when, when the G20, uh, you know, entire summit happens. Well, uh, because uh, here uh, there are 19 countries who are the member of this G20 and then European Union is also the part of it because trade also happens related to agriculture, European Union, whenever they come into the picture. So here all these countries are 60 percent agricultural dependence is there. 60 percent of them, they have their agriculture land which is available with them. Then 80 percent of the trade relates to the agriculture. So we have common problems. So those common problems are required to be addressed. So this is the best platform which was identified in the year 2011 that G20 should have a joint working group and where we need to discuss separately these problems. And those problems are required to be uh, identified and then we need to have a work plan accordingly that is required to be implemented. Okay. So considering that yes, food security that has always been in the center point of discussion, we need to ensure the food security, we need to make available the quality produce to the people, then again uh, there are several challenges which are happening in the agriculture. Either you speak about the climate uh, uh, impact which is happening, climate change impact, I should say. So that climate change impact uh, has, uh, I mean, it has affected in some cases, it adversely it has affected our crops. Mm -hmm. But we need to come in pace with the production, considering the demand uh, for the increasing population. So under the impact of climate change, declining resources, we need to fine tune our program so that continuous supply is there and then the pro production chain is, remains unaffected. So here climate resilience Agriculture is required to be put into place okay. and then we need to have a kind of uh, sustainable agriculture and where we need to have common uh, 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 pro, uh, common issues are there. Mm -hmm. We need to find out the solution. We need to have an interaction so that we can learn learn with the, each other's experience and okay. share the knowledge with, with each other and finding the solution to the problem. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll go into uh, various aspects of, uh, you know, uh, the discussion there as well. But let me bring in Mr. Sandeep Das also, senior journalist. He's also joining us. Uh, Mr. Das, welcome to uh, the show. Now, India uh, has, has given a call to G20 countries with, with agriculture on a now focus on a 3S strategy that is uh, sustainable, smart and serve. So how would you describe this 3S strategy in, in today's context? Because it is really important. On, on the one hand, we are tackling climate change. On the other hand, uh, there were food security issues as well, which we witnessed during the COVID pandemic. 
globally i'm talking exactly. about if you look at the the particular last couple of years has been very tough for the the entire world you call a conflict in ukraine or 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 in the global food security and uncertainty in the climate state. so india is playing a key role in here basically into provide because we are the one of the biggest producer of food grains wheat and other crops and and india is a very unique position here because we have all agriculture diverse diverse by countries and we have all agriculture zones in terms of weather and all so that that g20 is a very crucial because sustainability because two things one is the food security another part is the our if you look at prime minister talks about the fertilizer security essentially because, because which was disrupted during the ukraine war so these play very crucial role if you don't have varietal uh, uh, development you don't have uh, inputs then it will impact the world food security essentially mm -hmm. so india being a one of the leading agriculture research organization and also producer of the many of the crops and we have also domestic uh, demand of various food. india is playing a very unique role in terms of g20 to to ensure that world food security ensure essentially although i must add here that since last year it has eased a lot in terms of you know ukraine war and all but the climate change issues are very violent and you will look at the way our wheat crop was impacted recently and all so that we need to be get prepared because this climate change event will be very frequent in terms of high temperature and and, and excessive rainfall and unseasonal rainfall so we need to be india in a position in a position to provide all with a solution about varietal in terms of varieties in terms of how to deal with the smart agriculture uh, practices mm -hmm. so that will help us in dealing with the world food security because in uh, the african countries other countries who are not that food insecure uh, not that food secured will will get to learn from indian experience okay all all this kind of uh, the g20 meeting also helps understanding the what are the challenges and we need to deal with quickly because climate change is here right at the doorstep indeed, of now indeed indeed yeah. uh, the, the time is to act now there as well and learning from best practices uh, followed by uh each other that seem uh, seemingly is one of the major motives i uh, you know i'd like to bring in uh, mr uh, vend gupta as well uh, mr from your perspective you know if, if we, we would like to understand another dimension of this uh, the mses that is meeting of uh, agriculture chief scientists uh, the first one was held in 2012 uh, during the g20 uh, process you know this is the 12th edition uh, how fruitful have these deliberations been so far given the fact that uh, these are uh, big enormous uh, challenges and uh, not necessarily that some of them can be tackled at a national level this would require uh, international cooperation well the very fact that uh, these meetings have continued uh, for the last 12 years that in itself is quite remarkable and uh, i would say if you look at the entire spectrum of membership of g20 there are on the one hand uh, developed countries uh, g8 countries for whom food security is an issue but it's not such a great issue uh food security is a real problem for the south mm -hmm. uh and india from india's perspective the therefore global south you're saying from india's perspective global south mm -hmm. from india's perspective therefore uh cooperation in agriculture and food security and nutrition and all the related issues becomes extremely important because we attach so much of importance to our outreach with the global south and uh, we look upon g20 and india's active role in g20 mm -hmm. as uh, a means to achieving that objective uh, now uh, when the the other point that i'd like to mention is that while there are working groups in so many different areas and we have been talking about uh, how countries should collaborate in um, uh, you know renewable technologies uh and share the technologies doesn't happen mm -hmm. because there are powerful commercial consideration must be uh, uh, you know uh, ignorant about uh, we cannot dismiss that mm -hmm. any country any company which develops uh, a new technology would want to capitalize on it mm -hmm. uh, agriculture is one field which i find look at our own country in india uh, most of the agricultural research and development and technology is in the government sector okay yeah agricultural research institutes agricultural universities and that is the pattern in most of the university most of the countries where i have been uh, israel is uh, regarded as one of the foremost countries in agricultural research and almost i can tell you about 85 90% of the research over there was undertaken by the government institutions mm -hmm. so therefore there is a very great possibility of bringing about collaboration mm -hmm. uh in the research and development technology development and if there is requisite political will 
then that sharing can also happen. Okay. And uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, the fact that uh, agricultural officials are uh, of these countries are talking, uh, and G20 uh, really represents the entire world. Mm -hmm. If you added the outreach countries together, uh, so I think it's a very, very important forum. Okay. It's beginning to, in fact, uh, take the place of United Nations in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I think it's extremely important. We should be happy that... Uh, uh, you know, this meeting is taking place and uh, will uh, uh, help us achieve our objectives. Uh, okay, okay. R&D is, is a very, very important aspect. Dr. Malhotra, there, I'd like to bring you in, you know, research and development uh, in, in the field of agriculture is the key element here. So, in terms of this particular meeting, the objectives as well, when we are talking about what needs to be done. Yeah, because here uh, now it is believed and it, is, it has already been proved that science and technology based solutions are there, those are required to be adopted in agriculture. So R&D always assume importance. So considering this in mind, so Indian Council of Agriculture Research, Department of Agriculture Research and Education has been given this assignment and uh, DARE is, is now hosting this event there and uh, at Varanasi. So here now the discussions are on and four main agendas have been put into. So where research and development that is in focus, science and technology is in focus and four agenda, first agenda relates to food and nutritional security, second one relates to climate resilience, sustainable agriculture, third one relates to inclusive value chain system mm -hmm. and fourth one is digitalization and agriculture. In, in all areas we will find that science and technology that is involved into it and then again we have very common problems which are related to, the, related to many crops. So th there are some international problems where we don't have solutions. So here all these uh, countries we have come together mm -hmm. where such common problems will be identified and joint working program, joint action plan that will also be made so that researchable solutions if somewhere needed those researches will be conducted with the common programs and then a solution will be accordingly provided. If there is some developmental aspect, that will also be. If some ready solution is available, that will also be shared. Okay. So this is a best platform. And again, it has also been mentioned that now this is the time where we need to showcase that yes, what kind of uh, success we have further achieved and those models could be adopted by the other countries also if those, those are applicable. Because in agriculture, agro-climatic zones they play the major role. Okay. So climatic conditions, because we need to have uh, technologies which are uh, specific to that particular uh, area or zone. So accordingly, there are different zones and technologies are available, research-based solutions are, if ready solutions are available, those could be shared. So okay. this is the best platform where we can share the knowledge and experience. Okay, indeed, uh, this is the best platform. Uh, uh, Sandeep, you earlier spoke about, you know, uh, the issue of food security, climate change as well. Those are the two key focus areas for discussion. There are the two other ones as well, as Dr. Malhotra mentioned, inclusive value chain, that is one. Two is uh, digital agriculture. So what are we looking at here when we're talking about these two aspects? See, if we look at increasingly in these two areas also, we are, uh, we are also, India is playing a quite interesting role. If you look at the uh, inclusive value chain, one of the great instances of inclusive value chain is the dairy industry, dairy value chain in the cooperatives essentially. It's one of the most inclusive, small of farmers and entire chain and we are the biggest milk producer and uh, this uh, entire world knows it about this particular value chain. And, and, and the rest of the world need to understand, particularly developing country need to understand this kind of value chain which India can provide over there. And, and a second a second part of it is that basically the uh, the the part uh, uh, basically in terms of climate change and other issues essentially how we can develop that kind of way. See, if, if you look at our uh, India's experience in terms of uh, agriculture research, and, and India is one of the leading players in terms of cereals research, mm -hmm. wheat and rice. And recently, you must have heard the wheat heat agents, wheat varieties. So that that is quite valuable for other countries. And I must add here in the G20 context that another is the millets. One of the core part of it is a millet, millet in terms of, uh, so that is that crop we are going, again going back to it, giving that, uh, is a resilient kind of crop. India is one of the biggest producer and exporter of the millet. And many of the countries have approached India to how to grow millet and the value chain, entire value chain part of it. Mm -hmm. And this year has been, uh, as you, everyone knows that uh, the United Nations is celebrating in a year of millets. So that also, the India's experience is crucial in this G20 meeting in terms of how to grow millet and the value chain part of it. India has done a lot of research in terms of our, our state center of excellence in Hyderabad, the, the, the Military Research Institute has done a lot of work. So that, those kind of things can be a very valuable 
input for the global food security if, if millets okay. is concerned. Okay, okay. Uh, you brought in the millets point. In fact, that is uh, something which I wanted to take next to Dr. Malhotra as well. Dr. Malhotra, the Maharishi Initiative, you know, uh, India's initiative is 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 one of the important components at, at this meeting. And, and when we're talking about uh, millets, uh, uh, where do we stand in terms of sharing our knowledge base? That is one, as uh, Sandeep was referring to it, and, and uh, making it uh, the answer to most of the questions which the world faces uh, today in terms of food security and dealing with the climate change, uh, you know, linked with agriculture. Yeah, correct. Because here, because you have mentioned now two points. One relates to millet, another you mentioned about the climate change, another. So, where, where we need to pitch in. So, here... Uh, if we speak about the millets, millets are our own crops. So, center of origin for millets is India and, and African countries. These are the two areas where uh, uh, these were, uh, I mean, these were evolved, I should say. These are the crops. So, these are, these are the crops which are called as the crops of adversities. Because whenever we speak about that, we need to have climate resilient agriculture. We need to find out climate smart crops. Then these, these are the crops which came, comes into the picture. And we used to recommend that, yes, wheresoever there is a scarcity of uh, water, we have limited available water conditions, then we should go for uh, cultivation of these millet crops. So, millet crops are rich in, uh, 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 I should say, nutrients. They, they are the environment-friendly crop and they are good for the health. So, considering all these benefits, we need to now convey that, yes, these are the crops uh, which, which give a kind of benefit to everybody, to the consumer. So here we need to promote and now our brand, we say, mm -hmm. Shri Anna brand. That Shri Anna brand is required to be now promoted and we need to make aware the, to the people that yes, these are the crops which are having these, these benefits. Okay. So climate resilient, climate smart agriculture, that is required to be linked with it. So Maharishi program, which addresses all these issues, which I, I, I earlier also mentioned, those four agendas, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. those are th th that is the central theme of this program where discussions are on. Okay. So, Maharishi program is well addressing all these issues considering these points in mind. Okay, and, and just, just to, you know, understand, what's the response from the global community to, uh, uh, to the Maharishi program, that is one, and to, to the focus on millets as well, because uh, that seemingly, you know, as, as the Western countries would uh, like to call it superfood, uh, we call it uh, Shriyanna. Yes. So now many new products are coming, but those products are required to be pushed. And a very good response has come world over because very recently one uh, international conference was organized in a PUSA campus. So a very good response came and people's comment were the foreigner, foreign delegates who attended our meetings. They mentioned that India is a committed country because now India has taken a responsibility that yes, we will celebrate international year for millets. And now India is providing leadership for International Year of Millets Observance. Throughout the world, we are providing, sharing the knowledge, and then uh, 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 we have, we are fulfilling our commitment, I should say. Mm -hmm. So, whole world is now celebrating. All our embassies, they are doing their business in a big way to promote these crops in a, in a, in a uh, time-bound manner, in a, in a, in a uh, uh, decided action plan. Okay. So, those action plans are, are, are in I mean, in, in those interventions are now being formed. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Gupta, you know, uh, when we're talking about international collaboration and uh, agriculture is, is one field which perhaps, you know, gets overshadowed by larger geopolitical concerns, be it uh, other issues as well. But this time around, you know, it's the picture is very clear that it is very closely interlinked with the threat of climate change which the entire world is facing. It has to be tackled. You yourself pointed out, you know, research and development, R&D is the key element to that. But in terms of key focus areas which should be there, when we are looking at this international cooperation on the issue of agriculture and food security as well, which are the themes of this, this time around? Well, you know, you mentioned about geopolitics. Geopolitics is everywhere. And the uh, unfortunate thing is that uh, when we uh, collaborate with other countries, when we talk with other countries, uh, uh, we get overwhelmed by uh, too much of politics. Uh, which doesn't produce any results. At the best, it helps us to understand each other and uh, understand each other's uh, you know, fault lines, rigidities. So I think there is a tangible um, uh, element of progress and cooperation that we can achieve. Uh, there are so many areas where it can be done. I think nothing is more important than ensuring food security because you know, that's bas basic, uh, vital uh, thing for our self-preservation. And we must uh, remember 
that uh, not in developed countries, probably not even in India, but there are countries in Africa, there are poorer countries where people are dying because of either hunger or malnutrition. Mm -hmm. So I think <clears throat> this is to be rightly accorded the highest degree of importance and I'm happy that G20 is attaching. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said earlier, from India's perspective, it is so much more important. Because uh, if you look at India's program with the developing countries, under our ITEC program or under our own other collaborative programs, I find that agriculture is one of the central points. Mm -hmm. um, and um, fortunately, India has um, uh, you know, achieved a considerable amount of experience okay. uh, in technology development, uh, in um, uh, you know, institutes developing technology, then connecting with the actual farmers, uh, so what you call public-private partnership. Uh, in all these areas, India has done remarkable degree of work. Mm -hmm. And I think it should give us a sense of pride uh, that uh, we can share our experience. Okay. Uh, there is a certain degree of admiration. Now, I'm not saying that uh, I don't want to be presumptuous in believing that India can solve all the problems of the world. There are surely technologies uh, developed uh, in many other parts of the world, mm -hmm. more developed countries, uh, which are more cutting-edge technologies. Indeed. Uh, but at least the technologies which are there in India have great degree of salience and relevance for developing countries. So I think our focus is basically on helping the developing countries, and this is a good platform. Okay, indeed, uh, sharing our uh, uh, knowledge uh, resources as well, uh, specifically technologies also, but in case of India, you know, sharing those... Uh, ancient knowledge systems also, which can uh, be of uh, very, um, uh, you know, profound importance right now. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gupta, Dr. S.K. Malhotra, as well, Mr. Sandeep Das, uh, for sharing your views and insight as our experts for pointing out all about uh, the concept of sustainable agriculture in today's age of uh, climate change, uh, dealing with th that particular threat. How can it be done uh, also ensuring food security and uh, the importance uh, of uh, the meeting of uh, chief agricultural scientists of G20 countries, which is uh, underway right now in India under India's G20 presidency. Key focus areas there trying to come together, find solutions uh, to the questions uh, in the field of agriculture, making it more sustainable. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.